Hello and welcome back to Claudio Visual with me, Claudia. Now, one may say that putting constraints on oneself, uh, in a manner of speaking, uh, sets one free. So with this in mind, here is Artistic Patronage and the Medici in seven minutes. Now, what do we mean then by artistic patronage and especially as it applies to early modern Europe? Well, it's the commissioning by an institution or by an individual of an artwork, including the drawing up of contracts detailing the subject matter of the artwork, be that quite general or described uh, with some precision, uh, the cost of the artwork, the materials used, and things like this. So it might be a commissioning by um, an institution, an organisation that's religious, like a monastery, or a secular organisation, like the council, um, or on the other hand, it could be an individual artistic patron, and in which case it would be somebody usually very wealthy, because of course you need the dosh to do these things. Uh, it would usually, and uh, I suppose quite unsurprisingly, be a male patron, though not always, and usually somebody of an elite social standing. And uh, as is the case in uh, Renaissance Italy, this patron would usually also be moving in humanist circles, so that's groups of people who were really dedicated to learning and to the revival of Latin and Greek uh, scholarship. So bearing all that kind of thing in mind, what can we say about the Renaissance artistic patron then? He, on the one hand, probably has a real genuine interest in the arts that he's commissioning, especially moving in these humanist circles and being so interested uh, in all the scholarship surrounding uh, the artworks. But on the other hand, being in a society with this kind of ingrained hierarchical uh, structure uh, and especially in a society which is therefore um, also prioritizing artworks and the patronizing of artworks he also wants to be seen to be a patron so it's for these two reasons really and perhaps the most salient example that we have sort of from more recent times today of um, artistic patrons is probably the Medici family of Florence so let's have a look at them so who were the Medici patrons of the arts then? Well, the Medici artistic patronage could really uh, be said to have begun with Cosimo de' Medici, also known as Cosimo the Elder. And here is a portrait of him by Florentine painter Jacopo Pontormo. Now, Edward Gibbon wrote in the famous history of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire that Cosimo was the father of a long line of princes whose name and age are almost synonymous with the restoration of learning. Now, Cosimo's power was disliked by certain Florentines, who imprisoned him, in fact, in the Palazzo Vecchio, and exiled him, and even demanded for his execution, the poor bloke, so this wasn't carried out. And Cosimo carried out very good uh, diplomatic work around Italy. He created a balance of power between Florence, Naples, Venice and Milan, he even moved the Council of Ferrara to Florence, bringing many invaluable Greek scholars over to Italy. The Council of Ferrara being an attempted reconciliation of the Latin and Greek churches, which unfortunately was not successful. Um, and most importantly, he was a great patron of the arts and he hired architects like Michelozzi, who was responsible for the Palazzo Medici, and the very famous Filippo Brunelleschi, who's famous uh, for particularly Florence Cathedral, responsible for Florence Cathedral, also known as the Duomo, an excellent feat of uh, architectural engineering. Now, after him, we've got Piero de Cosimo de Medici, who is also known, unfortunately, as Piero the Gouty, not the most majestic of, uh, of nicknames there. Now, here's a portrait of him by the Mannerist painter Bronzino. So Piero's time as leader was marked really by a coup that was led by Luca Pitti and others and backed by the Este family. He faced a war during his time against the Republic of Venice and did in fact defeat them with a league of Florence, Naples, the Papal States and Milan. And he continued the work on patronising the arts and this included also Dutch and Flemish works. And he then finally died of gout and lung disease. Now, after him, we've got possibly the most uh, prominent of the Medici family, I would say, uh, and that's Lorenzo de' Medici, also known as Lorenzo the Magnificent, Magnificent um, a far preferable nickname to Gouty. And um, here's a portrait of him by Bronzino, which is today in the Florence Uffizi Gallery. Now, Lorenzo was 
arguably the keenest and most powerful of all the Renaissance artistic patrons in Italy. And he sponsored artists like Michelangelo and Botticelli. He supported the spread of Italian humanism, as I've mentioned. So the humanist milieu combining Greek philosophy with Christianity and all this fascinating stuff. And he was an artist himself and composed poetry in his native Tuscan dialect, including uh, a quite hedonistic poem, uh, The Song of Bacchus, which, fe which features a repeated line, who wishes to be happy, let him be so, there's no certainty about tomorrow. Oh, an interesting message. And uh, so his court included Leonardo da Vinci, Sandro Botticelli, Domenico Ghirlandaio, Michelangelo, as I've mentioned. Let's have a look then at two nice artworks which were produced during this Medici patronage of the arts in Florence. So here we've got Domenico Ghirlandaio's The Confirmation of the Rules. This is from around 1483-1485. This is an image found in the Santa Trinita in Florence, the Church of Santa Trinita. Gorgeous image here, The Confirmation of the Rule. That would be referring to the rule of St. Francis. Really interesting architectural detail here. And to the left, we've actually got represented uh, members of the Medici family themselves. We've got Lorenzo the Magnificent himself, cheekily represented at the left there in his contemporary garb, which is quite nice. And um, finally, here's an image of a quite stunning uh, image, I think undeniably so, by Sandro Botticelli. So this is from 1500. And the fact that it is from the turn of that century suggests uh, or it justifies why it would have perhaps this very apocalyptic message about it. And this is known as the my mystic nativity relating to mystery from the Greek musterion, that which is hidden, that denotes musterion. Um, because as we can see, we've got the realm which is normally hidden, the divine realm, the celestial realm, converging with the earthly there. And there's actually in this image a lot of... Um, a lot of the iconography seems to derive from prophetic writings by the fiery Dominican preacher Savonarola, who did take control of Florence um, around this time, uh, which we might look at in a different podcast, who knows. So here we are, two fascinating uh, artworks which were produced uh, during the Medici patronage. Uh, and that's been Claudio Visual for today. So see you soon and thanks for listening. Bye.